A big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. If you're wanting to learn about how to make YouTube videos, they have classes for editing and photography. Or if you're wanting to write car reviews, there's classes to help you with writing as well. And most importantly, how to market and promote yourself or a new business. Check out the link in the description below and see for yourself. There's a ton of classes to choose from. Skillshare is also more affordable than most learning platforms out there. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 500 people to use the link in the description below will get their first two months for free. So check out Skillshare. Now, back to cars. When I bought my 2012 McLaren MP412C, a lot of people told me that I had bought the wrong car, that I should have spent my money wiser on a used Ferrari 458. Now, I laughed them off because Ferrari 458s are a lot more expensive than my McLaren, and on paper, this McLaren performs better than the Ferrari, but now that I have the two lined up next to each other and I'm looking at it, I suddenly feel a lot more inadequate. Hubba hubba. Wow. So let's go back seven years, back when these two cars were new. The McLaren came out as a direct competitor to the Ferrari 458. It was priced similarly around $230,000 starting out. They had similar performance with an edge given to the McLaren. Since it has a twin turbo V8 versus a normally aspirated V8 on the 458. And on the track, the McLaren with its active hydraulic suspension had a big edge over the 458 as well. But fast forward seven years, nobody is taking a McLaren or a Ferrari 4 458 on the track anymore. They're too old and with the McLaren it voids its warranty anyway so there's no way I'm taking it out on the track because I ain't giving up that warranty. So now these cars are just flashy toys that look brand new but they've depreciated quite a bit and you could make an argument for either car on which one is the better buy. If you're looking at a supercar from a simple cost of entry standpoint, the McLaren 12C is a slam dunk. I paid $105,000 for this 30,000 mile example. Well, I didn't pay for it, I actually financed 80, put down 25, and have a massive payment in my credit union. While a comparable mileage Ferrari would sell for $150,000 and up. My credit union only finances up to $100,000. So with my spending habits with a hoopty of the month draining my bank account every month, I couldn't save up enough for a down payment on one of these anyway. So the McLaren was the obvious choice for me. But a huge benefit to my McLaren 12C was it was sold with nearly a year left on a bumper-to-bumper -bumper extended warranty, whereas most Ferrari 458s, they let the original factory warranty expire and then deal with repairs themselves. Now, there is a reason for this, obviously. When I bought this McLaren, I disclosed all the repairs that it had while it was out of warranty, and it totaled over $150,000. The transmission has gone out twice on this car, twice at the tune of $30,000 each. The iris screen is another common failure the infotainment screen went out and that cost ten thousand dollars a lot of other little repairs here and there and the cherry on top is the engine actually failed in this mclaren that was a rare failure but that was a huge huge repair the ferrari 458 is obviously a much more reliable car but it does still have a few gotchas like the fifteen thousand dollar parking brake failure that sends the entire car in limp home mode and prompts you to have to replace nearly all the brakes. Also, the electronics wise, the 458 can have its quirks on occasion. And for some reason, even though Ferrari has been struggling with it for 30 years, they can't come up with a fix for sticky buttons and the leather dashboards rippling and falling apart. This car only has 2000 original miles on it, so it is still in mint condition. But a lot of the higher mileage 458s you see have sticky buttons and warped dashboards. Still, on new Ferraris, why, why can't you figure it out? Oh, and I forgot to mention the steering racks on these McLarens go out a lot, $20,000. But you have to give McLaren some slack. This was their first mass production supercar, and they do offer a really good extended warranty that you can renew every year until the car's 10 years old or has 70,000 miles on it. You definitely want to keep that up. But the Ferrari is certainly much more reliable, and looking at the two, it's definitely much more pretty. I never liked the Ferrari 360 and the 430 styling all that much. I mean, it's not ugly, but I didn't think it was that pretty either. But Pininfarina knocked it out of the park with the 458. It is just gorgeous from head to toe. But I can't believe they thought it was totally okay to completely cover up the engine in their Spider models because the top's in the way. All you can see is the intakes going into somewhere like a Porsche Boxster. So you can kind of see the direction Ferrari was going with this car, kind of uh-oh, and it actually gets worse when you start driving it. Well, 
almost. When you start it up, it sounds amazing. I also have to agree to a waiver every time I drive off in this car. So this is the first Ferrari to feel really techy, but the technology already feels dated. Unlike the McLaren, it still feels pretty futuristic in there. The buttons and knobs look pretty primitive, as well as the screen with the fonts. I don't want to say Comic Sans, but the, the font's not very good on the information screen. And the start button looks cheesier than the start button you find in the Honda S2000. I also feel a lot more closed in with this car. The seats grab way more harder, they're way stiffer, and I'm a lot less comfortable. Both cars ergonomics-wise have their issues, but this Ferrari is really weird. Typical of an Italian car, with the way the stereo works, the climate control knobs, everything's super confusing, including the gear shifts. Wait, where do I, okay, I didn't even know the turn signals. I have to push a button on the steering wheel for the turn signals because the paddles take up so much room. Huh. Let's pull out into five o'clock traffic in this. That's a great idea. Whoa. Oh, and that's so cool the way the steering wheel lights up. Just like a Formula One race car. This car feels so much more like a race car. Way more exciting, but also it's way more intense. I'm feeling every little bump and I'm in normal mode and I'm just glued to the steering wheel. Steering wise, it does feel um, kind of the same as the McLaren. The McLaren feels much more detached, I guess you could say. It feels a lot more computerized versus this Ferrari. You're really into the road, good and bad. You feel everything with it. It's just so intense. I feel like I would get tired driving this thing after a short time just from the intensity of it. It's all Ferraris, they have this it factor, this amazing intangible characteristic that feels so special. Even my Ferrari 355, which is slow compared to any modern sports car, had this, this intangible it factor right up until it caught fire and exploded. Which coincidentally is something the Ferrari 355 and 458s, at least the early ones, have in common. <laughs> So driving this car certainly does leave an impression. Wow, and parked next to the McLaren, it does look a lot better. But the McLaren offers a completely different experience. And in the parking lot, when you pop these doors, you're still gonna raise some eyebrows. Ho oh, ho, nailed the swipey door in the first try. You have no idea how hard that is to do. Hey, this thing still sounds good. Oh, I'm already much more relaxed. The seats of these McLarens are so much more comfortable, less grabby, and the suspension, everything just feels so much smoother, less frantic. Now, you might chalk this up a little bit to me owning this car for a while and being familiar with it, but I feel like this car is way more intuitive, though it is a little quirky having the climate controls on the door and the iris system. It is weird, but it is way less clunky than the Ferrari 458 with a bunch of knobs in like nine different places. It's all right here. So some would say this is a little boring, the fact that the car electronically pretty much drives itself and it's quiet and it's smooth and it's not crazy, but that's one of the things that I really like about this car. I like that I feel like I could hop in and drive it every day if I wanted to. I can take it anywhere and I don't feel like I've beaten myself up driving for two hours and need a nap. It feels like a normal car when you want it to feel like a normal car, but when you get on it, it's definitely a supercar. So if you're in the very fortunate position to decide between these two incredible cars, I'm not gonna help you at all because I have no idea. The Ferrari is certainly more exciting to drive and feels a lot more special, but it kind of wears on you after a while. It's more harsh and uncomfortable and dominating. Whereas the McLaren, I feel like I could drive this car cross country in comfort and I wouldn't hesitate to do so. But if I had the Ferrari 458, I'd probably go, eh, maybe I'll just trailer it to Vegas so I'm not tired when I get there and then I don't depreciate it by putting miles on it. You, you kind of get where I'm going here. The McLaren, it feels more practical and it's depreciated to where it feels like you can use it a lot more. I don't feel like these are gonna get a lot cheaper even if you use them quite a bit. Whereas the 458 is a much more expensive car to buy and it has the potential to depreciate a lot more, especially if you use it. The McLaren feels pretty safe 
if you have the warranty. But if you're the type of person that's not gonna use the car very much, you get it out of the garage once every two weeks or a month, you spend more time dusting it with your little feather duster thingy than actually driving it, then this 458 may be the better buy for you. Or you could just have the best of both worlds and buy a Lamborghini Huracan. But nobody wanted to loan me a Lamborghini Huracan for obvious reasons. Thank you for watching. <laughs>